The relationship between isolation and creativity. When you look at some brilliant people in history, Stanley Kubrick, uh, countless authors, countless artists, Vincent van Gogh, you'll notice that these highly creative people who produced incredible pieces of work at volume, they were quite isolated. And what isolation allows someone to do is to think deeply. As long as they use isolation effectively, there are ways to you know, isolate yourself and completely waste time and not accomplish anything. But someone like Dostoevsky, who created Crime and Punishment, he was a heavily isolated novelist, and yet he produced some of the greatest works of all time, this Russian author. And his life was no easy feat. Of course, this struggle and in his life allowed for some incredible thinking, allowed for some real deep thinking, and dark thinking too, but uh, that's the fine line that you sort of dabble with when you're talking about being isolated while also being creative. And this doesn't work for a lot of people if that's most of their life is isolation. It's, I find it can't be entirely healthy if you're doing it 24 hours, seven days a week. I, it can get to you. So having some level of connection is obviously helpful because it can keep you sane. <laughs> Focus takes 22 minutes, maybe even longer, to get into. So to get focused on a task after you've been distracted, they say, the scientists who studied productivity have said it takes 22 minutes to get back into the thick of things. That's just to get into it again. Then you have to produce. So... What isolation allows for is less distraction, which means opportunity for more focus. And more focus could result in deeper thinking, where you could sit for two to four hours and produce and produce and produce every single day. So when you think about it, you only have 24 hours in a day Say you want to create something creatively. Well, minus seven to eight hours, so let's just say eight hours for sleep. Then you've got to eat. And then if you have a job, take another eight hours there. There's 16 hours for the work and then for sleep. And then you have to eat, so probably, what, two hours? A day for eating 18 hours you've got six hours and then whatever else is going on in your life maybe you have errands and stuff to run you you don't have much time in a day to really sit and create now a lot of these isolated impactful people their jobs were essentially requiring them to be isolated. So they took that eight hours of work and put it into isolated work. So they gained the eight hours. But say your eight hours is deep thinking, deep focus, deep creativity. If you had that every single day, you know how much you could accomplish in a lifetime? It's pretty significant. So it would be wise to be in a position where you could create I want to bring up Haruki Murakami. Hopefully, I'm not butchering his name, but he's a Japanese author, quite famous, who has created a disciplined schedule 
and he's heavily isolated, but he's he's married, so he, he does have connection. Like, he has a relationship with someone, but his wife respects his boundaries, and his every day requires him to be up super early, and he is pumping out writing every single morning till usually the afternoon. So he's putting in multiple hours straight of productive work. And there's an example. I I highly suggest people look at Haruki Murakami because he's one that's, he's isolated himself in a very healthy way. He's not into social media, he's not into all the distractions, but he's actually created a very disciplined schedule for himself that is, I would say, very healthy. Like You, you wouldn't look at him and say, oh, well, he's really crazy. No, he's into his 70s, and he's got a perfect schedule of, of how to conduct yourself in a day. You know, he's, he's running daily. He's in super excellent shape. And I just, I think if you're going to kind of go into creative endeavors and you decide, okay, I need to isolate myself to accomplish things, I would highly recommend you look at the people who've done it successfully with a sane mind because that's powerful. So Haruki Murakami, he would produce work. Every three months, he'd have a whole novel basically written. Like we're talking a significant hundreds and hundreds of pages. So every three months, he'd have material because his schedule is, well, I just want to bring this up because I want to make sure I got his schedule right. I believe... He either wakes up at 3.30 a.m. or 5 a.m. Because I think a lot of people, they go into this thinking, well, I'm just going to attack it whichever which way. This is an interesting guy. First of all, I just want to put some background around him because I'm quite impressed. He ran a jazz club. And his life wasn't actually very healthy. He was a smoker, and he he really he was really destroying his life up until his thirties. And uh, sixty cigarettes. He'd smoke sixty cigarettes a day. And uh, you know he was doing okay with his jazz club, but uh, he decided he'd he'd take a stab at writing in his thirties and. He also decided he needed to stay in shape. So he um, started running. Here's someone who's decided, like, as a jazz club owner, usually you're surrounded by people, but now he's going to become this novelist. He's going to isolate himself more. Typically, your addictions and whatnot will rise up even more when you decide, I'm going to isolate myself more. But he's actually created more discipline around this. Here it says he'll wake up at 4 a.m. and immediately start writing, working for five to six hours. And even if he's not in his writing the novel mode, he'll still wake up with his wife pretty early. And he'd also go to bed super early um, after it got dark and then wake up with the sun. So it's usually always before 5 a.m. and bed by 10 p.m. While some people may imagine the life of a writer as balancing long stretches of idleness with flash and pan inspiration moments, reality is writing and creativity is more of a steady grind. So he's basically looking at it as this marathon. And it's a reflection of this structured routine and structured lifestyle. But uh, 
you know, to pump out five to six hours every single day. And then in the afternoon, he'll run 10 kilometers or swim 1500 meters or do both. And then um, all of this is, is activity he's doing in, in his own way by himself. And he's keeping to it every day without variation. And then when he's done in the afternoon with his exercise, you know, he'll listen to music, he'll relax. I, I think Stephen King has a similar approach in that he'll try to get everything done early and then he gets the rest of the day to kind of relax. But the repetition becomes an important form of, of this deeper state, it seems. And uh, he's clearly developed some mental and physical strength in order to do this. It's not right off the bat, right? Here's a chain smoker who's completely flipped his life around. It wasn't just like one day. I, it would have taken some time. But he decided his previous life wasn't the life he wanted, so he switched it around. It's a very interesting life example there. And you could look at other people who who really had... I, Haruki Murakami's really figured out how to make the life livable and, and actually very interesting and, and fruitful and, and satisfying and fulfilling. Now, you have plenty of examples of people who have completely messed up when it comes to isolation. Maybe they've gotten into addictions around just constant, like Netflix is the big one. It's like just constantly watching Netflix or constantly on social media or watching TV or just habits that aren't productive and aren't really contributing to the world. You, you, you're not really having a legacy to leave behind. So when you're thinking about isolation and creativity, or you want to be creative and you know you're isolated, look at what it is you are doing in that time of isolation. Is it something that you're contributing to the world? Is there a legacy you're leaving behind? These are things to think about, to make your time alone effective. I'll leave you with that. Until next time, thanks for tuning in.